Welcome uh, everyone to our virtual admitted parent and student session. Um, yeah, we're excited uh, that you can join us tonight to just to learn about all of the resources uh, that students have access to um, here at Goshen. And welcome also to those of you joining us um, Facebook Live uh, or um, via the internet uh, through, yeah, through uh, different means. Uh, so as I mentioned before, um, just some quick tips before the, we begin. Uh, so there is Spanish interpretation uh, being offered uh, in this session. And so at the bottom of your screen, uh, you will see this little option. Uh, the interpretation button is circled there. Um, and then if you need help uh, getting to that feature or if you can't find it, just let us know in the chat feature. And if you're joining us via Zoom, uh, please mute your sound, uh, but we would still love to see your beautiful faces uh, so you can unmute your video. <laughs> and so tonight's schedule, uh, we will go through uh, some introductions of all of the individuals uh, from our faculty and staff here at Goshen College. Um, who are our support system and support team to our students. Um, and then they'll also be sharing some advice. Uh, we'll then open up the floor uh, for questions uh, for both of um, you joining us via Zoom and then also via uh, Facebook Live. And then we'll also have some current students and some alumni and their parents uh, joining us later uh, so that you can hear their stories. Um, of just their experiences here at Goshen uh, and the different resources that they had access to. Um, it's always good to have like that personal connection uh, from a student. Then uh, we'll have a prize drawing. Um, yeah, for those of you joining us. Um, so without any further ado, I will pass it off to Thomas um, for some introductions. All right, thanks, Kellum. Um, yeah, so my name is Thomas. I'll introduce myself a little bit. I'm an admissions counselor at Goshen. Um, graduated from Goshen in 2015. Um, I'm also an assistant coach for the women's basketball team. So I do a couple different things on campus. Uh, our next section here, I'm gonna be introducing each support team member and then I'm gonna give them a chance to uh, introduce themselves anymore and then give their 60 seconds worth of advice uh, for you guys. Um, we kind of have different support team members from different parts of campus so that we can cover uh, all of the different departments and all the different ways that Goshen uh, supports our students. Uh, while we're doing this, we encourage you to think about any questions that you might have um, for, you know, different departments or different uh, support team members. Um, once we get to that part, though, you don't have to remember everybody's name. I understand I'm not great with names. Uh, I'll be directing the questions to the appropriate person um, once we open up the floor. Um, so first up is me. Uh, just going to go in a little bit. So um, like I said, my name's Thomas. I'm one of the admissions counselors. Uh, my best advice is just as you're going through the admissions process, as you're going through the process of choosing a college, ask questions. <laughs> don't be afraid to ask questions and don't be afraid to, uh, don't be afraid to not know things. I'm still learning a lot of stuff about Goshen after being a student here for four years and then working here for another three years. So if there's more I can learn, there's absolutely more that all of us can learn. So don't be afraid to ask those questions. Uh, next up, we have our Goshen College president, uh, Rebecca or Becky uh, Stoltzfus. Hi, everyone. Um, as Thomas said, I'm President Stoltzfus, but a lot of people around here call me Becky. You're always welcome to do that. Um, about myself, I graduated from Goshen College in 1983 with a major in chemistry, and then I went on to do... Um, to get my master's and PhD in human nutrition. And I worked for uh, 10 years at, at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health and then at Cornell University before returning to, um, 
to Goshen College. And my piece of advice for you is to, um, to believe in the power of small. Often in, in our culture, we're taught to believe that bigger is better. But I think when it comes to going to college, that uh, smaller can sometimes be better. And what you will find here is that people will learn to know you and support you and open doors for you, um, the, that we can challenge you and support you fully here at Goshen, Goshen College and um, open the doors of the world to you. That's certainly what happened for me. All right, uh, the next person we have is Chad Coleman, uh, who's our Director of Campus Safety and Housing. Yes, thank you. So yes, I'm part of our Student Life Department. And so as kind of a Director of, of Student Life Operations, like kind of the administrative plumber, I call it. Uh, so I oversee our Campus Safety Department. Uh, so our housing operations, as, as mentioned, I also kind of provide some leadership at our Rec Fit Center and run our intramural sports programs here. So uh, kind of wear several hats. And if I were to offer advice and kind of along the lines of what, what Thomas was saying in terms of asking questions, you know, I always use the analogy about student life being like kind of the other half of the brain of, of college. So you have, you know, or, or if it were a machine, you have this hardware and the software, like that's a computer and the hardware is definitely academics. That's what you come for. That's what you're getting. That's what you're buying. That's what, you're, that's what the, the trophy uh, at the end. But what we try to do in student life is we try to make that experience more user friendly, more intuitive. And I say we, we're e we, want to, we want it to be easy to use and we want to offer tons of programs and applications uh, and, and support students. So in order to do that, so my getting to my advice is to utilize the support systems that we do have in place, uh, whether that's academics or or within student life. Uh, so whether that's academic support, or if you're having roommate troubles, uh, or if you have questions about your account uh, with financial aid, there are just so many great resources and so many great people here uh, that you can use. And I would challenge you as as future students here. Uh, to make that uh, connection because part of the whole like you know holistic growth that you have in college in terms of learning in the classroom but you also there's a lot of learning that happens outside the classroom uh, it's kind of like immersion into that adulthood here uh, so you have a lot more responsibility so I would I guess I would just challenge you to ask questions seek support when you need it and, and take advantages of all of the great resources that we have here and and, and for the parents here uh, I would challenge you to challenge your student to make those initiatives on their own uh, and have them seek out help uh, and, and kind of a, as part of that growing process and learning process and getting through school and graduating. All right, thanks, Chad. Uh, next, we have Steve Wilma, who's our Director of Financial Aid. Well, it's wonderful to uh, see everybody here this evening. Um, I gotta change my screen so I can actually uh, see what's happening here, but it's wonderful to um, be a part of this evening and answer whatever questions you have a little bit later on. Um, I've been at Goshen now for going on, getting closer to a year, but I've been in uh, higher education administration for probably, let's see here, it's over six years. And um, this is a very special place and um, there's a lot of wonderful things, wonderful relationships for everyone involved. And certainly I found that as a staff member and I've heard so much from students and others about uh, what, what a unique and wonderful place this is. So uh, really glad that you could join us. Uh, the point, the advice that I would have for you very quickly is to make sure that you have seen your students' financial aid notification. This is the document that will set forth all of the different financial aid, the costs and everything else. It starts out with a block at the top that has the costs and then it goes into the, the gift aid, the aid that doesn't have to be paid back, the scholarships, the grants. And then it moves into the loans that might be available. And then finally it breaks down all those costs. So if you have not seen that document, uh, certainly that is a key document to be aware of and certainly to ask me or really anyone in our office of uh, financial aid, if you have any questions about 
uh, any of those facts or, or figures there. So once again, welcome and uh, a pleasure to join all of you this evening. All right, thank you, Steve. Um, next is Jan Kaufman, uh, who works as our registrar, uh, which means she is the person who helps us all sign up for classes uh, when it's time to do that. Um, so Jan, go ahead. Hi, everyone. It's great to see you all. Yes, our office does oversee registering for classes, advising, um, transcripts, a lot of, a lot of details. Um, my husband calls us the academic accountants. Um, but I think my, my word of advice or my couple words of advice would be to be curious at this point in time. Um, I think so much of what I hear new students coming in is a lot of stress around choosing a major and what is it you want to do um, as a career. And I think my advice to you is to remain curious, especially in the first year, to see your major and possibly a minor as being opportunities to explore um, what might be out there, some things that you maybe haven't thought of before. So that first year, don't get maybe so locked into uh, thinking you wanna be a doctor or a nurse, but maybe more just what, what are my options and to explore what things that you might have interest in. Um, so that's my, my word of advice at this point is to just remain curious, ask questions, get to know faculty, um, engage your classes in a way that uh, just opens doors for you that you maybe hadn't thought about before. All right, thanks, Jan. Uh, next, we have Judy Weaver, who's the director of our, excuse me, director of our Academic Success Center. And I don't see Judy, so we'll come back to her if she's popping in a few minutes late here. Um, so the next person we have is Kevin Miller, who is the head of our pandemic task force. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. Um, I, I work at Goshen College also in the development office uh, doing fundraising, but um, I got called to join the pandemic task force because I have a nursing background. I was a biology and nursing major at Goshen College and graduated back in 1985. In fact, that's where I met my wife, who is President Becky. So we are glad to be back in Goshen and joining this community again. <clears throat> my, uh, my word of advice is, uh, is really simple. It is get the COVID vaccine if you haven't gotten it already. <laughs> and a little bit of background about that. Uh, you know, young people are pretty resilient and they can tolerate COVID illness much better than those of us who are older. But I'm here to tell you, it is still very disruptive. And all of the precautions that we've had to go through for the last year of wearing our masks and keeping our distance is, is very burdensome. And if a student becomes positive for COVID and has to go into isolation for 10 days, uh, they can still access their classes online, but we all know that gets old quickly. So the quickest way for us to be able to get back to some sense of normalcy is, is to tamp down the, the virus. And we can do that by increasing the number of people who are vaccinated. We'd love to get to 100%, but if we could get to 90%, even 85%, I would, I would be feeling pretty good because it would, it would diminish the presence of the virus in our community. And I think we could get back to a, a more normal uh, college experience. And I, I think that's what we all want. So um, that's a simple piece of advice. It's just get that vaccine and encourage your neighbors and your family members to do so as well. All right, thanks, Kevin. Uh, next, we have Greg Summers, uh, who is our student accounts manager. He helps with all of the uh, paying of the bills and such. Uh, so Greg, jump on in. Okay. Um, 
Greg Summers. I'm also a class of 1985, uh, graduated with a degree in Bible and religion, and somehow ended up running nonprofits. Uh, so here I am. Um, a degree in sign language interpreting and a master's degree in public administration along the way. Um, I love to help people figure things out. Um, one uh, thing you should know is that next week, the fall payment plan opens up. So if you look at your financial aid award letter, you should have the, the basic information you need to set up a fall payment plan and have six months to pay it off. So that's tip number one is, not just plan ahead, but go ahead and get started with a payment plan. Um, if you go to goshen.edu forward slash pay online, we have a tutorial video, all the information you're going to need on how to set up a payment plan. Item number two is parent permission. Uh, in accounting, we, we get caught in uh, some weird dynamics. We have to have student permission to talk to parents about academic or financial uh, matters. So if you're a parent, and you call in and you want to know specifics about a bill or something and I don't have permission to talk to you, it's going to get real awkward real fast. So please <laughs> make sure you uh, set up parent access. It's going to help in a number of ways. Um, and I guess finally, um, don't be afraid to ask. I would so much rather talk to you now and over the summer rather than wait till November to try and figure things out in, in retrospect. Um, Accounting, we, we do a lot of numbers crunching, but we're also really friendly and we usually have chocolate. So come on by. All right, thanks, Greg. Um, I have been asked to recommend that we try to not speak quite so quickly uh, for the sake of our Spanish interpretation. Um, so just, try to bear that in mind. I know I do it as much as anybody. I tend to speed up as I go. Um, so next we have Jan Shetler, who is our Director of International Education. Hello, everyone. I'm really happy to be here and to speak with you tonight. Um, I started at Goshen College more than 20 years ago in the history department. And most of my time here has been a professor of history with a specialty in African history. And this is my second year in um, international education. We have the study service term SST that I hope you've heard about uh, because it's a fantastic program, immersive experiential education. We go to five places around the world. Um, Indonesia, China, Ecuador, Tanzania, and Senegal. And we also have shorter term programs, which are experiential and um, immersive in the United States and others around the world. So my big advice is to think about this early and figure out where you wanna go and just don't miss the opportunity to do this because it's really, um, you know, like you develop close relationships with host families, with people in all kinds of different places. Um, it really transforms your outlook on the world. Uh, in, your, in your first year in your identity, culture and community class, there'll be a chance to learn about the different options and plan for those. Um, the worst thing is, you know, you get you get into a major and you, you know, one thing leads to another and you get to be a junior or a senior and you haven't gone and then, then you know, it's too, you get too busy. So plan early. There are so many great opportunities. Um, we have a group le leaving tomorrow to go down to Florida to do disaster relief work as part of their service. Um, down there. We have a group um, traveling around this region to think about indigenous economies. Um, so even in COVID, we have some local and some U.S.-based kind of things that we're doing. And next year, starting in the fall, we're going to send a small group to Ecuador. And I hope in the spring, we're going to be up and running again. Um, because we've had a year of not, not being able to travel internationally. But I'm excited about when we can again, and I hope you get the chance to do that. Thanks. 
All right. Uh, next, we have uh, Hilberto Perez, who is our Vice President of Student Life. Oh, thank you, Thomas. And I also want to thank all of you who are present this evening for taking time to accept our invitation and uh, have us share a few words of advice with you. Uh, here at Goshen College, I serve as the Vice President for Student Life and Dean of Students. And I've been here for nine years at Goshen College. I have uh, done a little bit of teaching, but uh, have moved over into the administrative side of the house uh, for the last number of uh, years. Uh, I would say that uh, my, my 60 seconds of advice would be, you know, young adulthood is such a fun stage of life. It brings you so many new things for who you are. You are working to a, logged in. You're working to develop your sense of identity, your, your personhood. And when you arrive at a place when there are so many other people with your same age who have some of those same questions, it can be a lot of fun. And you can really enjoy each other's company in trying to figure things out uh, about life. I, uh, I would only recommend that you take it slow. I'm on it too. So many things that are coming at you for activities and clubs and organizations and Senate and all types of activities. I would just say, uh, take time to develop one, two, three, or four relationships really well. Build those networks that you're going to engage in your classroom and uh, go to events together. Uh, enjoy being at Goshen College. Follow the community standards as much as you can and uh, enjoy uh, building those wonderful relationships with your new friends and finding who you are here at Goshen College. And we will be there to support you in student life. All right, thank you, Herberta. I'm having trouble speaking. Hilberto, thank you very much. Uh, next, we have Ann Venderly, uh, who is our academic dean. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Very glad you could join us this evening. I, too, am a Goshen alum, um, class of 1985, which seems to be very well represented here. And um, I have been in healthcare for 10 years and was in higher ed in Illinois uh, for over 20 years. This is my third year at Goshen College, but it's great to, to come back and get to know a place all over again. Um, as the Vice President for Academic Affairs and Academic Dean, my responsibilities are the academic programs and the faculty. And so my bit of advice is to really take what everybody's saying about asking questions and direct that to faculty. You'll probably get to meet faculty as you sign up for your classes and you start to explore what you might be interested in majoring in. I'll echo what Jan said, you don't have to decide right now. You can explore, you can try things out. Um, you may find something interesting. We have a lot of people who double major and put unlikely things together, which is great. Um, but I do encourage you to get to know your faculty. Our classes are meeting on campus, in person, so you can stop after class and ask that extra question, or you can go, faculty all have office hours every week, and you can ask a question during those times in person or online, and um, they can help direct you to other resources if you need it. Um, so I think the theme of questioning continues and I encourage you to do that with faculty um, as well. Thanks. All right, thank you, Anne. Uh, next we have Erica Albertine, who is our new athletic director. Thanks, Thomas, and thanks to all of you for joining this evening. Um, yeah, I'm the new athletic director just in my second week. And so before this though, I was the head athletic trainer at Goshen and have been here for about five years. Uh, so I direct the, the athletic program, part of the Crossroads League for most of our teams. And then we do have one team uh, in the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference. My piece of advice, you know, and I went to school um, at the University of Idaho and then also Manchester College, which is close to us here in Goshen. And one thing that I just love about Goshen College is just the community that we have. 
And so my advice would be to be present. Uh, you might not, you know, you might be on one of our athletic teams and then you can come to our practices and events and games and engage that way. Um, or you might be a fan. So we're trying to build up some of our fan base uh, and working with the community. But one thing that I've really noticed is being able to build up this Maple Leaf pride. So we're all Maple Leafs together. Uh, and I'm excited, you know, to have some new Maple Leafs into um, Goshen College next year. And then also just to keep being connected. And so really just being present uh, giving fully, you know, as my athletic trainer side, um, getting in, you know, some of your physical activity and also the mental health and all of that in this current time that we're in. So really just being able to take care of yourself and be fully present in the moment. All right. Thanks, Erica. Um, so next we're going to move into more, uh, open questions. Um, so if you're joining us via Zoom, feel free to submit questions into the chat. Um, or if we're sort of paused, you can unmute yourself and ask your question uh, verbally. Uh, you, If you are joining us via Facebook Live, uh, submit a question in the comments and we will ask those as well. Uh, I'll be directing the questions to the proper people as we go. Um, so our first question um, that showed up a little bit earlier that I want to sort of circle back to and, and just have him address out loud is about payment plans. So uh, Greg, if you could just speak a little bit more about how the play payment plans work and how you would uh, sign up for that. I think that would be helpful. Okay, easy enough. Um the website I shared in the chat, goshen.edu forward slash pay online, uh, gets you to our online payments page, oddly enough. So there's a tutorial video there that explains the whole thing. We use an outside service called Nelnet. And um, you set up an account, the student sets up an account um, and adds the parent as an authorized party. Then the parent can add their payment information uh, and set up a payment plan to cover whatever out-of-pocket cost you have uh, for the semester. Each plan is by semester. So fall, spring, May, summer, uh, those are the plans that we offer in addition to a single payment option. Um, there is no fee for the single payment option. And if you use ACH to pay for it instead of a credit or debit card, you save about 2.5% on a convenience fee. Um, each semester plan, cost $25. Once you set it up and set your schedule, it will send you reminders and then do the automatic draw of the payment based on whatever account information you set up. So it's it's fairly straightforward, but again, I walk people through setting these plans up all the time. Uh, call me, uh, if I email you, there's always a link in my email to set up a Zoom call so we can do share, share screens and, and walk through the process while we're online together. All right, thanks, Greg. Um, next question I saw is, I think one that Jan will be best able to answer, which is, uh, is SST a requirement? Yes, I would love to answer that question. Um, yes, at Global at, at Goshen College, we think you deserve a global education to be competent, to move across cultures, to learn about the world, to um, think about yourself in relation to all kinds of uh, other cultures and systems. So yes, it is required, but it's not required to spend a semester abroad. It's an amazing experience. We hope you do that. But there are other ways to do it, to get that immersive uh, both study and service. And so we have three week courses in May term and summer where you can do off campus, um, both study and service, and you can do the rest of your uh, requirements on campus. Um, so it it's 12 credit hours, the equivalent of a semester, but it's um, you can do at least part of that on campus. Um, so yes, a global education is what you're going to get to become a global citizen at Goshen College. Thank you. Am I am I correct in saying, Jan, that there is a there are some domestic 
options as well uh, as international options. Yeah, thank you for reiterating that, Thomas. Yes, there are domestic options. There are even Elkhart County options because, you know, Elkhart County is global and uh, other, I mean, the, the U.S. is global. So you can learn that cross-cultural engagement in lots of different places. You don't have to cross a border. So absolutely, yes. All right, thanks, Jan. Um, our next question uh, I'll direct to Kevin here. Uh, will receiving the vaccine be required for living on campus? Uh, it's a good question. And it's something that we on the pandemic task force are talking about every week. Um, and at this point, we have not decided that we will require it. Uh, we are working hard at, at uh, persuasion and encouragement, and we'll see how far we get with that. Um, we certainly care about the safety of our community, um, and we would like to find a safe way to do that uh, without requiring it if possible, uh, but we're certainly holding that as a possibility for the future. Uh, there is one area where we have already decided uh, you have to have a vaccine, and that is if you are traveling abroad. Um, because our, our host families and host countries um, in many cases are requiring a vaccine. And, and that actually is aligned with some of the other travel vaccines uh, that are necessary when you do international travel. All right, thank you. Um, our next question, and I'll be curious to hear the answer to this because I know what it was when I was a student, but I'm not sure now. Uh, Chad, what all are the intramural sports that are available? So it's, it's evolved a little bit this past year with dealing with the COVID year. We've had to do some different things, but uh, as you say, in a normal typical year, we've done in, uh, what, kind of seasons and tournaments. Uh, we're starting to do more tournaments now uh, than in the past, but primarily uh, we have an outdoor soccer league and indoor futsal soccer league. And then we've also done indoor volleyball and sand volleyball leagues at different uh, times of the year, as well as a basketball league, uh, an ultimate Frisbee. Uh, we've done tournaments uh, that we're going to be running through May term. We're running four tournaments through May term. And in normal year, we also have a touch football tournament right around Thanksgiving. Uh, but for May, we're doing a spike ball tournament for the first time. And we're bringing back a, an old favorite and kickball tournament outside, uh, as well as a dodgeball tournament by popular demand and a three on three basketball uh, which is something that we're not doing in May, but we did do uh, this past spring. So uh, it's a combination of seasons and tournaments, uh, and it's throughout the whole year. All right, awesome, Chad, thanks. Um, so I'm gonna direct this question to Jan, and this is a, a fairly common question that we've gotten from students that are incoming for next year, which is when will they register for classes? Yes, registration happens in the summer as part of summer orientation. And so all students will be required to be um, engaged in one of the pre-launch events that we'll be offering. The first one will be May 19. I think the second one is June 10, uh, where you will be spending an hour with some of us as you uh, just to help get you ready uh, for registering for classes. So we'll be preparing for what that looks like um, in terms of courses that are offered, options that you would have, there'll be a survey that you'll take. And then after that pre-launch event that you attend, you will be assigned um, a faculty advisor who will be contacting you the following day and setting up an appointment to meet with you. So it'll be a virtual uh, registration appointment this year as we did last year. And you'll be working with a faculty member uh, to set up your schedule for, we actually do the schedule for the full year. So fall and spring and May term. Uh, so you'll talk with them a bit about what your interests are and uh, come up with a schedule that should look really exciting for you. All right, awesome, thank you. Um, I've, had, I've gotten a, a couple of questions here about when freshman move-in is. Uh, so I'm not sure who would like to speak to that. I know there are a few people involved in that that are on the call. So whoever wants to jump in and, and answer that question about what orientation at the end will look like and when freshmen move in is. I can 
share briefly and, and Dean Benderley can also uh, share, we're working with the orientation planning team. We are, we haven't finalized the exact actual, the actual date, but uh, we are looking toward the, the move-in date for first year students uh, to be Sunday, August the 22nd, where it would give us more time with parents and students to, to be on campus. And um, we will have a, an extended orientation. So there will be a sort of a few days before that. We also have first year students who are on athletic teams that they also arrive uh, sort of at the beginning of August. So we, we kind of sometimes think that uh, first year students all arrive at the same day, but we say that there are sort of these rolling dates of students that arrive on campus. And it's really important for, for you as your student and parent to sort of realize, are you with a particular group of students that uh, might be coming earlier? And again, the folks within admissions can, can give that uh, particular information or Dean Benderley, she might want to add anything else. I'll just add that um, programming and, and new first year students will be required to be on campus Monday, August 23rd. Throughout that week, we'll be starting some classes and the, this very immersive orientation. So some, some athletes are moving in a little sooner or later, but for first year students, they're probably moving in on Sunday and starting the programming then on Monday the 23rd. Okay, thank you. Um, so I have, I have a question that I'm going to expand on a little bit. Um, the question is, do we have security call boxes on campus? Um, so Chad, if you could, uh, I guess, answer that, but then just kind of speak to campus safety and, and what kinds of things Goshen does for campus safety and, and all of that. Sure. So uh, security call box, I'm, uh, I guess I'm envisioning the kind of like the old school pay phones or the light kind of in the center of the campus. Uh, we do not have anything quite like that. We have some phones on the outside of a couple buildings to, uh, to call in where they're uh, maybe handicap accessible or uh, elevators and things of that nature, but um, not necessarily phone hookups. And, and we used to have some of those in outside of specific spaces, but as the cell phone generation kind of took over, um, that tends to be the primary method of communications for most anybody with a phone in their pocket. Uh, we did go in, uh, I have campus safety's phone number and email on pretty much every entrance on building. So if you were lost on campus or didn't have that number, you can pretty much go to any door uh, and be able to find that number located on there. Uh, and campus safety is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days. Uh, so there's pretty much always someone here on duty to take your call. Um, student, uh, campus safety is part of student life, and we do kind of serve as kind of caretakers uh, of the building. Our, our guys and uh, our team, you know, locks down buildings each and every night. We check residence halls. Uh, we help facilitate problems with uh, students that may have, uh, whether it be in the residence halls or being able to have, be the proper contact to bring in. Uh, if it's something related to a facilities issue or a student life issue, uh, my campus safety officers are trained to know who to help to bring in uh, for support uh, for those sorts of things. And we also have a great relationship with our Goshen Police Department, uh, our local fire department, which is just down the street, and then the hospital uh, is also right across the street. So we kind of benefit uh, pretty greatly based on our proximity to all of these other uh, resources that you know we, we might require for the heavy lifting uh, in terms of emergency services or actual police intervention uh, on campus. So I'm happy to say we do have good connections there and liaisons that we meet with regularly and check in with uh, who keep us informed uh, of things within the town that we should be on the lookout with. And usually whenever we do have to bring in a, a police uh, to investigate something on campus, they're usually here very quickly uh, within just within a few minutes. So uh, we, have a, we have a pretty good thing going here with campus safety and just in general and security uh, on the campus. And sometimes I feel like students feel too safe here. They're not locking doors when they should and things like that. So we continually to, to uh, pass that message along pretty much all year long with uh, messages uh, on safety and keeping uh, things uh, and the communicator campus safety 101 
and some orientation. And if you go to our website, goshen.edu slash safety, there is a video there uh, that we'll, you might see again in August, but uh, kind of gives you a little summary as far as like what campus safety officer does and what we do and, and how we support uh, campus. And we also have a, a mobile app called OmniAlert that we use uh, in order to get uh, notifications out to students uh, pretty quickly, whether it be some sort of campus emergency or uh, some threat that we would want them to know or, or to take shelter for if we had to, whether it be anything from a tornado or or some kind of uh, outside threat in the community that, that the police have made us aware about. So that's campus safety. I said, check out our website. There's a lot more information as far as like what kind of services and what uh, we do for campus. All right, thanks, Chad. Um, our next question uh, is in regards to our pre-med program. Uh, so again, I'm going to kind of open this up. I would imagine, Anne, that you'll be the best person to, to answer this question. Um, so it, it's discussing our pre-med program compared to other larger schools. And I would imagine that what they're getting at with that question is, can we provide the resources even though we are a smaller institution? Yeah, that's a good question. It is one of our most popular majors. We do have a lot of students that study biology and microbiology and um, biochemistry. And I think we can hold our own against the big schools. I think what Becky talked about in the beginning about small being powerful, this is a good example. Um, this is, Goshen is a place where you'll be in small classes and the faculty will know you and help you. You won't be in the 200 seat auditorium um, taught by a teaching assistant like some of the really big schools. You're with our full-time faculty for lecture, for lab, um, for all those hands-on things you need to know. And um, our outcomes are really good. Placement into med school for Goshen College graduates runs between 80 and 100%. So we're very successful there. We have a lot of students that go into other health professions. That was my track. I went into physical therapy. We're very successful with those kinds of programs, dentistry, and even students that go more the science route and get PhDs. So I think that our pre-med is, is a very strong program um, that has really successful outcomes and um, they have great students in there and they do really well. Could you also briefly uh, touch on nursing because that was another question that we had a, a similar kind of question but about the nursing program. So our nursing program is arguably the oldest one in Indiana. Um, we've, we've been doing nursing for a really long time, and I think we do a good job there too. Again, small class sizes, our full-time faculty are teaching the students. They have a lot of clinical experiences, and it's very convenient that we're so close to the hospital and those kind of learning experiences. Um, we are in the process of updating those labs. Uh, we know that there's a lot of good new technology available for nursing particularly and we're working, we're making some incremental changes to make our facilities better, longer term, looking at some really significant improvements there. But again, um, licensure pass rates is one of the markers of a good nursing program and, and ours are very good. Our students are very well trained and very sought after um, for jobs. So I think we do a really good job in those health professions. All right, thank you, Anne. Um, we have had a couple more questions about uh, COVID protocols and vaccine procedures. Um, so we were asked if vaccinations are not going to be required, um, could you share a little bit more about what some of the safety protocols are um, specifically for any students that may, may test positive um, for COVID? Um, and then is there a plan to be able to offer the vaccine for any international students if they have not been able to vac been able to get vaccinated before they arrive? Yeah, those are good questions. And uh, I can speak to the second question first because I just helped two international students this afternoon who arrived. Uh, they were studying remotely, but they're on campus now in person for May term and I was able to help them get registered for the vaccine uh, online. 
uh, so that they can get that pretty quickly once they arrived here. Um, even if we were to require uh, vaccines, we would still need to be prepared in the fall for the presence of uh, COVID. It, it could still happen. And uh, what we anticipate is that we will have um, some designated dorm spaces set aside for isolation if, if there's a student who tests positive, just like we've been doing this year, they would move out of their residence uh, room and into a special isolation floor and for the duration of that uh, isolation period. So it would, it would be similar to what we did this past year, but we anticipate a lot less occupancy of those spaces. If I can just follow on to that for, for a moment, um, I, the word isolation is really scary. <laughs> so just to let you know that students who are in isolation are also getting a lot of support. Um, so we have uh, physicians who check in with them regularly through telemedicine and um, give support to them that way in terms of their physical health. Meals are delivered to them and um, we also, we've had a great student um, group that has been providing other kinds of social and material support and, and, um, and care to students who um, have to go through this, this uh, required period of isolation. So you're, you're in isolation, but you're not left alone. You're getting a lot of support. Awesome, thank you for that. Um... The next couple of questions that we have are more about our SST programs. Um, so the first question was, do students assume the cost of travel uh, when they go abroad? And the second one was, uh, what does lodging look like while students are abroad? Okay, thank you. Um, Yes, it's uh, an amazing thing that at Goshen College, when you do a semester abroad, it is wrapped into your tuition room and board. There is um, a surcharge that helps to cover your plane ticket somewhere in the world. There are, of course, things like, uh, you know, you have to get a passport and vaccines and other things. But but pretty much it's part of your tuition room and board, which is really a, a great thing. Um, when you do the shorter term courses, it really depends on where you're going. And um, you know, if, if you've got a plane ticket to go, um, yeah, somewhere around the world, that can't always be wrapped into everything. So there's gonna be some extra costs for those and, and those vary according to, um, yeah, what kind of, where, where you're going and, and what sort of uh, conditions you'll be in, which does connect to the, uh, the question about lodging. Our, our semester abroad SST, uh, we stay with host families. The first half of the semester, you're in a, in a city where you're doing study, you're learning language, culture, history, you're thinking about a theme for that group and you're staying with host families. And then the second half, you're, you're, doing, you're doing service where you're um, volunteering with an organization and doing community engaged learning. And you will also be with a host family, a different host family, because you'll probably be outside of that city. And there'll be other Goshen students in, in proximity to you. Host families are really, the best part of SST. Um, they, it just allows you to really understand the culture at a much deeper level. Our host families are, are you know, they're, they're part of the learning and they, they know that and they don't see you as a boarder that you're coming for room and board, but they, they're, your, your, they're your family. And so they take you with them when they go to weddings or trips or, you know, take you to see things. So it's a really amazing thing. The shorter term, that depends. Sometimes there can be some host family. If it's a shorter term, sometimes the group lives together in um, some group housing. So that one kind of depends. But thank you for those questions. 
All right, awesome. Um, we had a couple of questions about dining uh, and food at Goshen. Um, so I'm not sure again, who would be the best person? Well, I know the best person on Goshen's campus. That would be our head chef, Jeremy, who is fantastic, uh, but he is not with us right now. So whoever wants to answer these questions, feel free. Um, is the dining experience different at Goshen because of COVID? So I guess we can talk about what that looks like now. Um, and then are there vegetarian options um, or I'll just expand that uh, for people with any dietary restrictions, what does that look like at Goshen? One of the uh, wonderful things at Goshen College is we have an excellent dining services partner in AVI uh, Food Systems and uh, they do a wonderful job in, in providing uh, good quality and excellent choices for students in terms of the food. This year, because of COVID, our dining experience to that question actually is different. We have de-densified the dining hall, so therefore we have fewer tables available. And uh, at this point, we are having two students per table that uh, if you want to eat in the dining uh, hall, you can sit and eat uh, with another person. We also have this uh, new thing that came this year through our uh, dining services called the green box. And the green box is, is basically what it is. It's, it's a green box and you uh, jump into the line and uh, you're given a green box and you can fill that up uh, and then take it with you if you choose not to dine in the dining hall. At this point, all of the food is being served by the uh, staff at ABI. So students do not uh, touch uh, any of the utensils to serve themselves. Uh, I think the only one that they actually do is if you want to get yourself a drink, a soft drink, you can sort of get your cup and you can do that and you can walk out. What we have really enjoyed through ABI and have appreciated very much is they do uh, work really well in terms of dietary restrictions. Uh, if you're a vegetarian, if you have a sort of a, a lactose-free diet, uh, if, if you are vegan, you can also uh, connect with AVI directly. And um, I've just been very impressed. Uh, my daughter is uh, one of those students uh, at, at early on when her career here at Goshen College, she uh, needed some, some very specific uh, food that uh, she could eat. And I was just impressed with Jeremy and, and Didi and, and others on their staff that would just automatically just respond immediately and try to work with students. There are takeout options as well at the Leaf Raker that you can uh, take your card and you can swipe uh, or we'll call it a swap. So if you don't want to eat in the dining hall, but you'd like sort of something that that really delicious brisket over at uh, Leaf Raker, which is also at the uh, dining hall as well. So there are there are very different um, options that you can have. So we're, we're quite pleased with the uh, food services here at Goshen College. And we're not exactly sure how that will look like for the fall. But um, my sense is that if, if we're at more normalcy, the dining experience will, will probably not be exactly as it was before, because we're still working to do some prevention work with the spread of the coronavirus. Okay, thank you very much. Um, this next question, I think Anne and Gilberto, you'll both be good people to answer this. And maybe Becky, you could speak to this too. Um, are there any required religious events at Goshen College? And I guess we could roll religious classes into that question as well. Well, certainly there are courses. Um, engaging the Bible is one of the courses that everyone takes. And then after that, there are some options. Um, we do have a weekly program of chapel and convo, and it alternates week to week. Um, for that, students are required to attend a certain number. So theoretically, you could attend all chapel services, or you could attend all convo services. And the convocations tend to be more educational in nature and less religious. Um, the chapel um, experiences are usually led by our student ministry team and they do a fantastic job. So there, I would say there are options. Um, there are some requirements within the curriculum in terms of courses to take. 
Um, and I, Alberto may want to say a little bit more about how student life approaches it, but there are requirements too for attending certain events. Uh, in student life, the, the area of campus ministries, in terms of uh, any required events, uh, again, as I would just reiterate with Anne, there, there is the requirement for chapel, but you can alternate those. And so at some point you may jump into those. We have our campus ministries team, uh, which are student ministry uh, team leaders at this point and our campus pastor that make uh, those um, faith oriented uh, events. Uh, for students that they can jump in, they can be a part of a group called Unity. There um, are other groups on campus that uh, might have a, a time of uh, sort of faith oriented. But at this point in student life, we don't have any required events that who people would need to uh, attend uh, on our end. I would just add, uh, go back to the the advice, all the advice about curiosity, and we have a faculty and and student body and 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 our employees here um, have come from many faith traditions and many faith streams. And I think that you will experience Goshen College as a place where you can have honest conversations and ask honest questions and um, really learn a lot from your student colleagues and the employees on campus about um, a wide variety of faith traditions. While also we claim our Christian heritage and, um, and we are rooted in the way of Jesus. And so we are that unabashedly. And we are also really open to conversation and questions and curiosity about the religions of the world and um, doubt as well as faith. And um, I would invite you to explore that here at Goshen. All right, thank you very much, all three of you. Um, I did have a question uh, for Erica about athletics, um, specifically having to do with um, attending athletic events and sort of that atmosphere, what is that atmosphere uh, at our athletic events specifically for, you know, the student section or, or things like that? Yeah, so I think, you know, this year with COVID, we definitely had a lot of differences from what we have had in the past. Um, there has been in the past before COVID, a lot of excitement, you know, surrounding specifically our soccer team outside, uh, and then also men's volleyball indoors. So uh, we just started up this year, like kind of the purple shirts and giving those out as part of the leaf pile is what we're calling it. Uh, just trying to build some excitement around that and definitely, you know, open to all of our Goshen College students. Um, you know, even if you've never played soccer, or played basketball before, being able to come to the games and have that community going with your friends uh, and experiences at the games. So yeah, that's what I would say about our current um, fan experience in Goshen College Athletics. All right, awesome. Um, we also had another question. Um, I'm guessing, Hilberto, you'll be the best person to, to answer this. Who is the current student government leader? Um, and what does student government at Goshen kind of look like? Yeah, that's a great question. We actually have a, a student government association or which uh, the sort of the, the, the body uh, that sort of represents all of the students and their needs. And that would be the student senate. And that student senate uh, is made up of students who uh, are from all years, uh, and we mostly have uh, second, third, and fourth years because our elections tend to happen uh, the year. Uh, for example, this, this week we are looking to get applications for student leaders who would want to join in and um, run for a Senate seat uh, where we have uh, at-large members and we have a Senate leader and we have a vice president and a vice president for marking and a treasurer. That student senate works with uh, student clubs and organizations for uh, different uh, activities. And if that student government uh, or student senate uh, offers uh, funding for clubs and organizations that would like to 
uh, organize and plan activities and, and do some uh, general uh, engagement with other students or peers on campus. Uh, right now, our current uh, student president is Brian Hernandez, and he is uh, not, I don't, I don't believe he's actually running for next year. So we will have a, a new uh, Senate leader or Senate president uh, this coming fall. All right, thank you, Alberto. Uh, so I think we are closing in on the end of our time here. Um, I did have one more question that I wanted to direct to Becky to wrap up. Um, but in the meantime, I did have a, a very brief question about when the, uh, what time the student sessions are on May 19th and June 10th. So the, the pre-launch days. Yeah, I can answer that one. Um, actually, I don't have it exactly in my mind. It's either five and five or five thirty, seven and seven thirty, or eight and eight thirty. It's one of those. It's in. There'll be three different time slots for an hour on each of those days, starting between five or five thirty and ending a little later in the evening. So, well, that information I think is going to be um, coming out by May first, which is very soon. Yeah, Hannah, uh, who is one of our other counselors, put the link to the information in our chat. So if you're interested in looking at what that the pre-launch information uh, that is on our website, uh, that's in the chat. Um, the last question that I had that I wanted to direct to Becky um, is a fairly broad question, but I think is something that's good to know for our incoming students and, and for parents who are uh, trusting their, their children to us, uh, which is how does Goshen College foster uh, an inclusive community that encourages growth for our students, socially and academically? You're actually, I think you're muted still. I think fundamentally that begins with our respect for the dignity of every human being. Your presence here matters. We care about every person, um, student and employee as a unique individual who we will seek to know and to support. We don't, we, um, we view the differences between us and the similarities between us as, as another source of our learning and curiosity. And we also recognize that in our world, the differences between us have been causes of conflict and bias and injustice. And part of what we teach our students and teach one another at Goshen College is how to use your voice, how to say what you see and ask for what you need um, so that we can all be more effective at um, overturning injustice that happens in our social structures and within ourselves and the assumptions um, that we make about each other and the habits um, that we have. So you will find at Goshen College uh, um, a community that is made up of many varieties of, of people with many life stories. And again, just returning to the theme of curiosity and exploration and um, learning to know one another. And again, that the foundation of that is, is our respect for the dignity um, and the value of each person who is a, a member of our community here. All right. Um, thank you very much. Uh, so I want to say thank you to our uh, panel. Uh, you've all been wonderfully helpful. Um, I saw there were one or two questions that we may not uh, have gotten to, so we'll work to answer those um, in 
a different context, uh, but we will try to get you those answers um, if there's anything that we missed. Uh, next, we're gonna be moving on to our uh, current students, and a couple of alumni, uh, as well as parents of those students. Uh, so I believe Hannah will be taking over next. Awesome, thank you, Thomas. And thank you everyone for being on the panel. We really enjoyed that. Um, and then thank you, yeah, uh, seniors and high school students that are here. Um, congratulations for making it this far in your high school career. Uh, we look forward to having you guys on campus in the fall. We're really excited about it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get going here. We're gonna get some questions and answers. Um, yeah, I'm gonna start off with Taylor. Uh, I saw you hop on a few minutes ago. Um, yeah, Taylor, if you wanna hop on, say your name, where you're from. Yes, hello, I am Taylor. I am from Topeka, Indiana. So just about a half hour from Goshen. Awesome. And why did you choose Goshen College? Um, I chose a school. I liked the community atmosphere that it had. And then being a student athlete, the emphasis on being a student while also being able to play a sport. And then the support that I had between the two was really great. And so then all that together, it just felt like the right place for me. Awesome. Thanks. Also, a big congratulations to Taylor for graduating. Congratulations, Taylor. Thank you. Um, yeah. What is the hardest part of college and how did you ever overcome it with like Goshen College's professors or counselors or RA or however you did that? Um, I would say the hardest part is coming in and learning time management because you now have this new independence that you're like not sure what to do with and you have to learn to schedule your own classes and figure out, okay, what am I gonna do in my free time? Like, do I wanna go take a nap or grab food or should I spend this time studying or starting on homework? Um, so I think that is the biggest thing, time management and just like figuring out good study spaces. And I think freshman year, especially when you take your ICC classes, the class that all freshmen take, your professors do a really good job of helping you figure out how to manage your time and giving you tips and ways that like could be helpful because each person is going to be different. So I think the, the biggest part and the hardest part of me, for me was like testing out the best ways for me to use my time and to manage it efficiently. And like, once you figure that out, I think that was like the biggest piece that I'm like, okay, I've got this down. I think I can navigate the rest of my four years at Goshen. For sure. Thank you. Um, yeah, and we'll just move on to the person right next to you. Um, Hey, how are you doing? Thank you for joining us. You, you want to share your name and I, I guess you're from the same place Taylor is. Um. Yep, I'm Yvonne S. and also from Topeka, Indiana. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and why did you feel like Goshen College was the best fit for your child? And if you could just share how you, yeah, how you know Goshen was right for you and your family. So we had the advantage of before um, Taylor even was able to start doing college visits, she played club volleyball and happened to practice out of the Goshen facility. So for us, Taylor knew she wanted to do physical therapy and her mind thought she wanted to go someplace bigger. Um, during club, we were able to visit some of those bigger colleges and she realized right away big wasn't for her. So we started really looking at Goshen, did an official college visit when we were able and right away I mean when we were greeted they came out and called us by name we had no idea who anyone was everywhere we went they called us by name it was so personable um we come from a very small high school to begin with and so she already had the support of teachers of when you needed help before during or after school they were always available and we found out that Goshen had the same thing and what's amazing as a mom is when I mean Taylor's goal was I'm only going to be at school during volleyball and then I'm going to commute second semester. Well, that never happened. She stayed at school the whole time, which was wonderful. I mean, just to watch her grow and become the person that she is. Um, but through all that, you know, when she calls me and says, mom, our professor thought that we seemed homesick the second week of school. So invited us over to their house and made us supper. And that doesn't happen anywhere. And the fact that the professors can see that, take care of our kids, 
even though I'm a half hour away, knowing that other families were being taken care of, it's just a huge, huge relief as a parent. Um, the safety concern, everything just, it felt right from the beginning. And we were just thrilled with the choice that she made. And it's, it's been nice to get to know everybody, you know, through volleyball, you get to, to meet a lot of the professors and then they see you and it's like, oh, it's Taylor's parents. And it just goes on from there. So it's, it's just a, a wonderful school. I love the close knit community. Um, it's so positive. They've always been there to help. And I, I don't have anything bad to say about the experience that we had. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. We've definitely appreciated you both being a part of this community. Um, congratulations again, Taylor. Um, yeah, let's go on to Pamela. Yeah. Hey, guys. Uh, my name is Pamela Ortiz. I am a business major with a pre-law minor, and I'm from Goshen, Indiana. Awesome. Thanks, Pamela. Congratulations to you, too. We just have so many seniors here today. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, graduated. It's very exciting. Um, so Pamela, why did you choose Goshen College? Yeah, kind of like a little bit what Taylor was saying. I had initially, I've done a couple of visits to Goshen um, before choosing Goshen to be my school. Um, but the first time I was there, everyone was just really, really nice. Like I could tell that the, it was like a very tight knit community. Um, and even just like I had done, well, that was my first like ever college visit. So then I kind of like based all my other visits um, in comparison to this one. And the other ones kind of made me feel kind of like an outsider of like, oh, it's like a high schooler on our campus, like doing that regular thing of like looking for schools and stuff like that. And when I was at Goshen, everybody was so nice and like said hi and just like was like, I hope you have a good visit. Um, so just kind of like I could tell there was a different culture here at Goshen um, where it was like very welcoming and wanting everyone to feel um, like they belonged. So that was really important for me. Awesome. And uh, the hardest part of college, if you just talk on that a bit and how you just overcame it with, yeah, the resources that you, that you had on campus. Yeah, I think that one of the biggest, um, like, yeah, challenges was just kind of like gauging how hard classes were going to be. Um, I think that no one really expects it to be harder. Um, like, we were like, oh, it's college, like, it'll be hard. But um, I had taken a couple of accounting classes, and I was like, kind of struggling. Um, it was just like, a lot of work. And I didn't really like, learn like wasn't able to learn the material at the pace that we were going in the class so I had actually gone to the academic success center and requested to have an accounting tutor um, and so I would meet with actually two accounting seniors um, almost kind of like weekly and we would just kind of go over our homework and study for exams and so that really really helped me to set me up with a good like accounting foundation um, and this was my freshman year so then going into sophomore, junior, and senior year. That really, really helped. Um, and it also just kind of like helped me to find, like to find other accounting students um, and to make other connections. So it kind of felt like my senior friends were like looking out for me in accounting. Um, so that was really nice. Awesome. Thank you. Congrats again. Uh, and thank you so much for being part of the GC community. I'm sure thank we'll you. see you on campus. Um, Adrian Yoder and Kathleen Yoder. Hello. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Uh, um, yeah, you guys, um, Adrian, we're going to start with you. Just share your name, which I just did, um, and where you're from. Yep. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Adrian Yoder. I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and I graduated in 2012. Awesome. And yeah, just real quick, why you chose Goshen College? Yeah, so um, I chose Goshen for a few reasons. I think the biggest reason is the really strong community that is at Goshen. I remember actually uh, visiting um, as a prospective student and having just a really fun visit and really connecting with people there even at the time before I was an official student at Goshen. Um, and also I had had friends that had attended Goshen as well and a family that had attended Goshen and they all just had um, a really great experience and still really strong ties to their friends that they had gone to Goshen with. And so, you know, it, it seemed to me like there would be long lasting friendships <laughs> from my experience there. And that has been the case so far. Um, and then the other two important parts to me were one, the SST program, which I've 
found to be very unique. Um, having a service component to it where you actually live with your host family and you know being able to study there as well. Um, and then the other part was the music program. I was a psychology and music double major at Goshen and um, it was really, really important to me for there to be a strong music component um, to my education. And so um, I connected with a voice teacher right away. I also took piano lessons while I was there. I was in the orchestra as well. I played some violin. And so I just had a really great experience in the music program. Um, and so I saw all of those things before I joined. And those, those were the three biggest things that um, I really took away from my time there too. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And can you share like what, what you're up to right now? What, yeah, what you're doing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So currently I work at the University of Pennsylvania and I'm the senior student affairs coordinator for um, the engineering school there, the online learning component. So of course we've been really busy this past year, um, really integrating online learning to the whole Penn community. Um, but what I do really is I work with students, I do academic advising, I do course planning with students and I host events and our students are from all over the world. And so I feel like that's something that Goshen also prepared me for was that SST experience and also, you know, kind of the global community at Penn was getting me familiar with people from all over the world. And so I've really been able to incorporate that in my job now. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, Kathleen, if you can share your name and uh, where you're from. Sure, hi everybody. My name is Kathleen Yoder. I um, am from Goshen and happy to have Adrian here with us right now. <laughs> I'm from Philadelphia. Um, we, we actually lived in Pennsylvania when Adrian came to Goshen as a student, but live in Goshen now. Awesome. Thank you. And why did you feel Goshen College uh, was the best fit for Adrian and your family? Well, a lot of what I was planning to say, Taylor's mom said, um, <laughs> I guess all moms kind of have the same, um, you know, ultimately we want our children to, to feel safe and happy. And, and right away, I could see that that was going to be the case at Goshen. Um, from prospective student visits to new student days, um, I right away um, saw opportunities for Adrian to make new friends and get involved. Um, the enrollment counselors and faculty, everyone was making an effort to get to know her name, and um, and that continued through, I mean, through into her experience there. Um, it was clear that the that her professors were were paying attention to how she was doing, not just academically, but um, socially, emotionally, and um, I knew that if 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 Adrian would run into problems, that um, there would be people that were paying attention and could sound the alarms and. Um, so yeah, I actually have a funny story. It reminds me of a story of when I, my freshman year, I forgot to set my alarm for my final exam. And luckily my friend called me when the final exam started. So I ran to the class and the professor was, um, what was his name? John Roth at the time. And he was on the phone calling me <laughs> to make sure that I wasn't missing it. He was in the class calling me. So yeah, people were really sounding the alarms that time. <laughs> wrong. Yeah. Um, I, I also loved, Adrian. just had so many unique experiences at Goshen. Um, she, as she already mentioned, she was a music student and, um, so she was in choir and orchestra. She got to go on choir tour. Um, and she, over a May term, she took um, arts in London and traveled to London to um, take in theater performances and tour the city. And um, there were also leadership opportunities for Adrian. She worked as an RA one year um, on her dorm floor and um, she also had an on-campus job. She worked for the phone-a-thon um, for the alumni and advancement office and made phone calls to alumni um, 
to hopefully get them to make a gift to Goshen College. But um, it was a it was fun for her to have the opportunity to talk to alumni. Um, just it was just really you know we were we were far away at that point while Adrian was in school, but it was just really fun when she would come home to to hear about. Um, what she had learned, the things she had been doing, her the friendships, and um, and just to watch her grow. Uh, I think Taylor mentioned time management. That was something huge that I noticed in Adrienne that she just took. You know, she 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 figured it out. She was juggling a lot of things and um, learned how to manage her time and. It was just really, um, as a parent, just fun to watch the growth in her over those four years and um, and kind of rewarding too, as a parent to see, to see now that she's turned out to be a successful adult. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, both of you for sharing. Uh, yeah, great to hear from you. Luna, if you're on real quick. Hola a todos. Hello, uh, my name is Luna Campos and my daughter is Diana Campos. She just graduated this past Sunday from um, double major with art and communication. And I wanna show you, I don't know if you can see it, but this is my daughter. One of her last um, projects or from her uh, last um, gallery show, art gallery. And one of the things that captured my attention was the were the scholarships and at that time i don't know i don't i don't remember the name at that time but now it's the intercultural uh, leadership award and and this scholarship right now is at twenty thousand dollars a year and it's renewable uh, for a total of eight eight uh, semesters and, and and she was blessed to have this um this scholarship uh, during the um, PA semesters. Um, at first, my daughter, she wanted to go uh, to a, a art school, but um, but it's, it's very expensive. And one of the things that helped a lot, a lot was the, the Goshen College financial uh, packages. So it, it was it was it was great for for my family, affordable, and and she received all the help from admissions and the financial department and that, and that was that was great and one of the, the other things that, that we really 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 like my daughter is very very family oriented and she liked to be close uh, to home and, and yeah and so she was a commuter and one of the other things that we really really liked was the student service term so, so she had the opportunity to go to Ecuador and it, that was a great experience for my daughter. I don't know what, uh, what else do you should, you wanna know about our experience, but yeah, that, that, was, that was great. I, I really feel blessed to, to be part of this, of this community. Great, thank you and congratulations uh, to your daughter. Um, yeah, that's awesome. I'm going to open it up for questions real quick. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll, um, yeah, I'll hand them out to the parents and alumni and students. And I'm just going to go ahead and ask a question because I like to ask questions. Um, yeah, uh, question for parents. Um, Luna, I guess we could start with you. Did you, so obviously with the pandemic going on this year, did you feel safe? Um, yeah, sending your, your child to Goshen College and just how, how we dealt with um, COVID on campus. 
if we felt uh, safe. Yeah, so, having like sending your daughter on campus and yeah. Yeah, totally. Uh, especially when the the testing, the COVID testing started, I feel more more safe with 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 that. Um, Question uh, pandemic task force did a great job with 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 that and now with vaccines available for all students and community. Uh, yes. Awesome. Thanks. Um, yeah, and then just reading questions real quick. Okay, um, I think everyone here is kind of from the east. Um, maybe the most south would be Taylor. Is Topeka in the south? Uh, no, okay. So we're all kind of eastern here. Um, I'll maybe have uh, one of our counselors answer what to bring from the south. But um, what recommendations, what you need for the dorms? Taylor and Pamela, I think you both lived in the dorms, if I'm correct about that. Awesome. Pamela, you want to go first? Yeah. Um, I guess I the biggest one I could say is like a mini fridge. Um, Sometimes I'm not a morning person, so I would buy like milk and cereal. And so I'd put my milk in the fridge um, and then I would like eat really quickly five minutes before class um, and also just like snacks or whatever. So like a mini fridge is what we had that I found super, super useful. Um, also just kind of like if you could like bring a chair or like a bean bag or something to create kind of like a comfy space for you like to do homework in the room. Um, I always found it to be kind of a nice change to go between my desk and like a bean bag that we had in our room. So that I guess that'd be my advice for my experience. Awesome. Um, I would say like for me, it was kind of just making it my home away from home. So I was big on like the decorations. And so I'd have a whole bunch of pictures up um, or just like little like memento things that I wanted in my room, just kind of just to have. Um, also, yeah, the mini fridge, I had a microwave too again, or like nights when you just need a little snack or popcorn. I feel like that's something that every so between that and like ramen that was always being made on the floor so I feel like if someone has a microwave um I also had like a mattress pad was another thing too just because I liked like the double mattress thing too just kind of I don't know that was me personally but just just whatever you want to make it your own space I would say I also had a mattress pad so I would definitely recommend that awesome thanks um, Adrian, how was it being so far uh, from home during college? Yeah, um, so it was, I think it can be tough at times because, um, you know, you can't visit your family on a whim. And so um, what I found was useful was, you know, just planning out like when I would be able to go back, there was like a fall break and then, wait, I can't remember. I think fall break and Thanksgiving were at the same time, right? Yep. No, <laughs> I don't remember. I just planned, I planned out what the breaks were and then I'd go back. And then actually what was nice is um, usually if you were going back, there were usually other students that were going back the same way. So you could carpool with them to travel back with them. Um, and, you know, for the times that you couldn't go back, I felt like also there were enough people that were sticking around Goshen during breaks that you could that you could be with so that you wouldn't be alone. And also what I'll say too is that, you know, um, like specifically with Thanksgiving, faculty and staff are very aware that there are students that like it's too far to go back for like a five day break. And so they'll host people, they'll, you know, put an extra seat at the table for you to join them um, to have dinner with them for Thanksgiving. And so, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, it kind of, Goshen kind of felt like a home away from home, you know, after a while. I think once you, as I said, you know, it just has a really strong community. And so, um, you know, people, I think, take care of each other and make sure that, you know, <laughs> they're helping each other to feel a little bit less lonely while missing family. But 
Yeah, but what I did find, which was nice, is that people are generally like if they're from the same area, they'll help carpool with you. And it's nice to have a buddy to drive with back and forth. Awesome. Thanks. Um, Pamela, laundry. Tell us all about it. <laughs> um, well, Goshen is really, really nice because you don't have to pay extra for laundry. Um, a couple other schools that I had visited were like a dollar and 25 or something, but um, Goshen is totally free. Um, definitely just like have your laundry detergent, um, softener, and then like a basket. But I would say like the laundry situation is pretty, pretty nice. Um, there are various like washers and dryers. So I almost like never really had to wait for an open one to use, um, but also kind of like you quickly figure out kind of like what are the most popular times to do laundry and so you just don't do it then but those would be my words of wisdom there awesome thanks um all right i'm actually going to wrap it up because we want to we want to stay on time here thank you so much students parents alumni um yes congratulations again to graduates and graduates of families and alumni too you graduated so good job um yeah thank you all for giving us your time tonight answering real quick um yeah we our majority of our students are not from goshen um or indiana they actually come from outside of indiana and we actually have a bunch of international countries as well represented um and then from the south um i guess um, well, I grew up overseas, so um, rain boots, bring rain boots. That's like the best thing I think I can tell you. And then an actual winter coat. Sometimes people put on a sweater and they call that a coat in the South. That's not a coat. You need like a thick actual winter coat. Um, but the best thing I can tell you is ask your admissions counselor and we will be happy to help you with that as well. Um, but yeah, that's all I have. I think, yeah, we'll move it on. So we are going to do a quick random draw for a winner. And yeah, let me just put in the calculator real quick of everyone that attended tonight. Awesome. Great. And drum roll, I guess I'll do the drum roll. Drum roll, and the winner is um, Caitlin Bolander. So thank you so much, everyone, for participating. We will, oh yeah, clapping, thank you. Um, we'll mail out your prize later on. Um, yeah, that's all I have. I think I can pass it back to you, Callum. Yes, uh, so thank you all so much for attending uh, with us tonight. Uh, if you do have additional questions that we weren't able to get to, uh, please feel free to email your admissions counselor or admissions at goshen.edu and we will, um, yeah, send your questions to the right person who will answer it. Uh, or if you would like to talk to someone, uh, feel free to also give our admissions line a call um, at 574-535-7535. Uh, or feel free to call your admissions counselor for more questions. But again, thank you all so much for joining us tonight. Um, and I hope you have a great rest of your week. Thank you for coming.